Let's talk about a fistful of dollars. <laughs> God damn. I just gotta I just gotta ask. When I told you that we were gonna do a high noon Saturday, did you get a little bit excited off of getting a Western day in? Because I know you talked about doing dad chair shit with uh, the golf <laughs> uh, last time. Yes. Western, it, same deal. It, it was no, it was good because I've been wanting to. Because, like I said, I like my black and white movies. I like my Humphrey Bogarts. You know, like I like my old school shit. But, okay, here's the thing. Like I said, I've mentioned... Now, I've mentioned this a few times. I'm like, there's really only two genres that I don't particularly enjoy. I'm not saying that they're bad genres. It's just not my personal wheelhouse. Um, I don't really like pirates. That's not my thing. Although, I watched all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and I found some of those to be quite entertaining. Um... But still, just again, pirates in general, not really my bag. Um, and then two, like cowboy shit. Not really 100% in my wheelhouse. Again, if presented properly, it can be. But just at base level, not really. But I'm like, I need to take this film appreciation, especially of old school. I'm like... Clint Eastwood's name's been around for as long as it's been around for a fucking reason. And I'm like, I've never, I mean, I've seen clips, you know, but I've never really sat down and watched the man in full action. And I gotta say, I get it. Maybe not in everything, because really the only Clint Eastwood movies I've watched are like the angry old man Clint Eastwood movies, like Gran Torino and shit like that. <laughs> you know that's what i that's what's in my wheelhouse like i'm like get off my lawn you fucking well i'm not gonna say what he said but <laughs> yeah probably shouldn't. But, but no dirty hair either not really like i i've seen clips i i, I know of it but like it's, i've not really gone down uh i've watched more let's put it this way i've watched a lot more charlton heston stuff than i have of clint eastwood I'll watch the Omega Man with you. That's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm going to rectify the Dirty Harry and Magnum Force situation because they're the, they're like a perfect one two punch, but I'm 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 glad I'm glad you're seeing the way of the Clint now. Well, see, here's the thing. Like I really really dig it. Like I understand now like the whole him and these old westerns. Like I get it now. I get the appeal. I get why they work. His cool, fucking calm demeanor and just like that—that that whole thing that he does in these movies—they're great, and they were. It works amazing in these movies. But if you take that and put it in any other thing, I'm like, I don't think it would work. <laughs> it wouldn't. <laughs> so it's weird. It's like I'm like, I really dug it. I appreciate it. And I get it. It should be uh, uh, rewarded as much as it as it has been. But at the same time, you see the limitations in it. So you're like, that kind of makes you take a step back where you're just like, you know? But it was really, really fucking good. Now, this is one of those movies. Every so often this happens. Where I will watch this movie from beginning. Now, this is my third time all right now the first time admittedly um a little a little, a little foggy um <laughs> but this this third time was the uh the sober esque <laughs> watch um from beginning to end attentive and every so often there's there's these movies that i watch like that but i still have no fucking clue what's going on <laughs> But I still find tons of shit that I like. So, like, I get the general idea. Like, I get, like, who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. Like, I get certain relationships, you know. Like, I get the general gist of things. But the overall... So you're going to have to connect a few things for me tonight. <laughs> I got you covered. But, um, 
at first, I want to go over this o- opening scene after we get past the fucking Marble Reds fucking intro, which was great, but a little harsh on the eyes if you're sitting in a dark room. Um, <laughs> Stings a little. Yeah, but uh, he's walking up to that house to get some water to drink. And you see that little kid in like all white fucking hop in through that window. Now, at first, I made the joke. I think it was the first night we watched, or the first, when we did the the whole day. And I was just like, that reminds me of the dude from Fantasy Island, the fucking the plane, the plane. Like I didn't realize it was a kid. And so he goes through the window, and then you start hearing the kid kind of cry. But the way that it sounds, because you don't see the kid crying, you just hear it. It doesn't sound like the kid. It kind of sounds like a woman having a good time. So, when and then especially when the other dude, the bandito dude, fucking shows up and kicks the kid out and is shooting at him. And then you fucking see the bitch open <laughs> the door, give the bat the dirty look. And I'm like, is that little kid getting him some? <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Clint Eastwood's just like <laughs> And then and then you you secretly message me like what the fuck are we watching? And I'm like this might be the best intro to a movie I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm just like uh, oh my god. But then I you know I don't I still don't understand why that kid was sneaking into that house like that, but clearly that I, I that's not what he was doing. <laughs> uh, had uh, it, it's a uh, mirror of the uh, of the end of the movie where the kid is uh, trying to see his mom, basically, mm-hmm. and he snuck out and snuck back in. Oh, is his mom a um, uh, a lady a lady you can call for services? <laughs> no, Ramon kind of took her by force. Oh, yeah, well, all right, that makes sense. Yo, D, what up? D- Who is that <laughs> man? Um, but, uh, so... Essentially, Clint... Now, does he have a name in this or no? So, the man let, with let, no name. Okay, the man with no name. Now, let, that's, that's what I was thinking. Now, is this a part of the this this trilogy i i i loosely understand how this works at best all right so like all italian movies in the 60s 70s did they were trilogies oh okay this makes sense now okay you're right but they're they are all right you can actually connect them because he get when we watch the good and bad and the ugly he gets his poncho that he's wearing in this one Mm -hmm. And in the second one, at the end of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which takes place in, like, 1863, I think. And this takes place in 1895. It has to take place in at least 1895 because the rifles they're using were made in 1894. So, um, So, each movie he has a name, and it's not supposed to be the same character, I think, but it is. Because it just worked out that way. So in this one, his name is Joe. And why is his name Joe? Because that's what the bartender calls him at the beginning. And that's what he starts going by when he rides into town. It's Joe. Nice. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, so essentially, if I'm getting this right, he, he strolls into town. Uh, and he's kind of just like getting the lay of the land. You know, seeing what's up. And he sees that uh, he sees there's some fuckery afoot, and he was like, "All right, so now is he doing what he's doing because it's the right thing to do, or is he doing what he's doing because he's like, I can get fucking paid?" He's never really a true good guy in any of these movies. He's trying okay. to get paid. It just so happens that it works out for the little guy. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, good. Kind of a bandit with a conscience, maybe? Kind of like a Western Robin Hood, sounds like. A bit, yeah. 
Like he's still robbing people, but he's giving it to people who need it. <laughs> he's robbing the assholes that run this town, not the guy trying to run the cantina with the big tequila bottles. Right. Okay. Um. So he kind of uh. That and, and that's what I'm trying to figure out is because like he kind of when he decides to kind of make his presence known, he does the one thing with the initial shootout. And he goes and talks to the sheriff. And it was kind of like that moment where I was just like, I just did your job, bitch. You know? <laughs> um, so does that, like, the whole time this is going on, is he in good standing with the sheriff? Or is the sheriff kind of like, please stop doing this. You're making things worse. Or, like, the sheriff leads the other gang. Okay. The one that sells guns. So, and, and or, well, I should say his wife does because she's the big bad over the whole the whole shebang really but he is kind of enforcing all of it um so the sheriff when he walked out there was like you just killed three of my fucking or four of my fucking guys uh okay now i see how it okay all right okay real real quick point of reference have you ever seen the samurai movie yo jimbo bits and pieces Okay, this is a straight remake of it that Sergio Leone did not credit Akira Kurosawa for, and they went to court over it. Oh, okay. So, okay. and I'm going to tell you, I think Leone lost. <laughs> um, So, cannot label that dude as a friend. Makes sense. All right. Um, But he does befriend the bartender dude, um, who's... An interesting guy, but the dude that I liked the most that, you know, wasn't Clint Eastwood, um, was the fucking, the coffin maker. I'm the like, old this... dude from Home Alone. Yeah, I was like, this dude is the whitest fucking dude here, but he sounds the most Mexican. <laughs> or Hispanic, I don't know how you're supposed to fucking say it anymore these days. But he sounded like he was fucking, uh... I don't want to say slow poke Rodriguez, but like drunk poke Rodriguez. <laughs> well, they would be Mexican characters in there because this does take place on a fight at a border town. So mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. But uh, that coffin maker, man, he. You want to talk about if there's at least one happy motherfucker in this town. It's got to be him. Like he, business is a booming. I was, I'm, I'm imagining that scene later on, when Clint Eastwood's hiding in the coffin and he's fucking riding him out on the carriage, and he's like, "Wait, stop! I, I want to see this." You know, like the the fucking coffin maker just rolls out and sees these two groups of people setting fire and shooting each other and just dying in the streets, and you know that he's just like with every gunshot. He's just hearing ka-ching. <laughs> Insert like, uh, Dave Chappelle, I'm rich, bitch. Yep. It's like, God, I love this town, you know? And I love so much so that the end of this movie, the end credits of this movie, as short as they are, because they did all the shit in the beginning, mm -hmm. but um, the ending shot of this movie, is, you know, Clint Eastwood's fucking ro you know, rolling out. But you see the coffin maker just measuring all the dead bodies of the people he just killed. And then he's, and I, I'm just, he's just like, man, I'm fucking. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, he's like another year of this. I'm going to be fucking mayor. <laughs> but half of those guys probably had bounties on them, too. So he's getting paid twice. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But, um, so. What? Now, I know there's this whole thing about this hidden gold. Is that what, like, does Clint Eastwood know about that? And, like, he's just like, I got to figure out where the fuck the gold's at. Or is it like, I'm going to stick around and clean this town up and fucking figure out a way to get paid? Bit of both, I think. Because he, he actually, um, he finds the gold in the, because remember, he's checking the barrels and he leans over on that one that he, didn't think it would be in, and of course that's the one. It's cl classic. It's gotta mm. be that way. Um, yeah, I think he was like, man can get. I think it's what his first words are to the cantina guy. Uh, is like, I, a man can get rich around here or something like that. And in his eye, he's like, well, if I'm gonna take the gold, 
I've got to pit these two gangs against each other so they'll kill each other, which he does phenomenal throughout the entire movie until he until he makes that one fatal fatal error uh, when he grows a conscience. Oddly enough, he has to pay the price for it. Um, but, he, but he's like, hey, they kill each other. I I walk off with a you know a barrel full of gold and some cash and all right, on to the next movie. I was surprised at just how much shit goes down. Like, there's, like, two or three moments in this movie where, like, they just, I just imagine, like, everybody's just like, all right, we got a night shot tonight. Like, what are we doing? A whole lot of motherfuckers are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the body count and total recall look like a kid's movie. Just, like, a lot of uh, shooting, and it was actually entertaining. Like, I, I enjoyed it. It was good action. Um... Clint Eastwood is just such a badass. Like, like I said, I don't think it would work in any other situation other than these like Western roles. But you know, like it just fucking rolls in, and he's just like, "All right, what the fuck's going on here? How do these people like like he he totally fucking Batman's the shit, where it's just like, all right, what's gonna piss them off? What's gonna piss them off? How can we fucking like?" <laughs> It was it was glorious to see. Like I said, I totally I totally get now his appeal. Like I said, I, I when I watched Gran Torino, it was more humorous. I mean, I enjoyed the movie, but like I said, I was watching it from the perspective of the angry old man. Get off my lawn! <laughs> but uh, no, like I I, I get it. I, I see why people uh, I see why people dig him. I dig they dig the Eastwood. My only complaint, because uh, it never happened. I wish Clint Eastwood's man with no name and Django, Franco Nero's Django, could have teamed up for one. And that probably would have been the ultimate. Get Sergio <laughs> Leone and Sergio Garbucci on the phone and be like, hey, combine. Now, I know you mentioned uh, the whole poncho setup. I never really dug that look. Like I, I like the old. Uh, I don't want to say traditional sh uh, cowboy look, but the only real movie that I can think of where the, I can see the look is uh, what was it? Fucking Tombstone, where oh, it's I like know. the long black, fucking coats and shit. The Dusta. Yeah, like I dig, I dig that like kind of a western look. You know, the poncho shit. Like, I get the functionality of it. Like, it's not that I, that doesn't go by the wayside. I get it. But I'm just like it's just a, it's a fucking weird look. Like you know what I mean? Like like you're gonna fight with a fucking blanket on. <laughs> it's an unnerving sort of look because you don't know he's carrying a gun under that poncho, and that's yeah. why he always does the. Yeah. Now, yeah. let me ask: Is uh, is this? I I noticed the whole scene where um. He's tricking the dude, and, like, he's just, like, you know, keep shooting. You gotta go for the heart. It's the only way you'll stop me. You know, but he's got the metal plate under the poncho, and then it drops, and I was just like, wait a minute. Is this the whole fucking Back to the Future 3 thing? Because th isn't this, like, like, he uses this to, like, outsmart fucking Old West Biff because he remembered that movie? <laughs> <laughs> which is taken directly from Yojimbo because Yojimbo ends the same way because that samurai uses a revolver but mm. yeah it's the same uh, it's this there you go which also the heart ain't all the way over here yeah he was like hitting shoulder area <laughs> his grouping was pretty solid but, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and as we talked about last time with shooting steel plates that metal has to go somewhere so Clint probably would have got had some he would have some cool scars or some brain damage one um before I forget you asked a question about a machine mm. gun yeah there was that whole shootout scene and he had that fucking that that uh that automatic one and it I don't know why it interests me like I I guess it makes sense given the time setting but 
the front of it, it like the barrel, like it had all of those tiny little barrels, like in the cylinder. And I was just like, it's a unique look. You don't see that all. Like I get it, I guess, but like, how exactly is something like that work? Like, is there like flint and like an explosion going off, like a whole thing going off for every single little one instead of like, because you know I think of like the belt fed fucking gun. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I understand you're not gonna have that shit. So well, I'm like, I'm like, instead of doing like a belt fed thing, it's like, are you doing it that way instead? I think that one's still belt fed because the Maxim machine gun was belt fed. And, and that was all the way, that was all the way back in 1890. So, uh, I, what I actually think, and I think movies get it wrong, kind of like video games get it wrong, where if you have a six barrel minigun, they think all six shots are going to fire at once. It's not. It's so the barrels can cool as it, as it spins. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's to protect against muzzle flash because on the old Maxims, they had a single barrel and they had a nice little fireball with them. Hmm. Yeah. So I think it, that might be a movie goof, but it looks cool. It looked interesting. I was just like, I'm like, that's kind of cool. Like, I'm just, I'm thinking of old timey weaponry. And I imagine too, like it bullet, like even just from like the regular rifles and shit that they had, like that's not, you you're not getting like clean enter and exit wounds, right? Like that shit, like kind of like just kind of goes as deep as, like you probably could get shot in the chest and and maybe survive it. Uh, maybe. I mean, like uh, none of the. I don't think back then they had uh, what we have now, which is copper jacketed ammo no. or steel jacketed ammo or whatever you put a you put a jacket on so the lead core isn't exposed because that lead will break apart pretty fast. That's why when we were watching the um. Uh, Italian crime movies. They were they were taking a knife and a screwdriver and popping them to to break mm. them apart because they'll break apart. Lead breaks apart pretty fast. So uh, I don't know how clean that would have been, and I don't know how what your survival rate would have been because if those had a chip in them, they could have gone. They can go places inside of you. Mm -hmm. Go to go to YouTube and watch a ballistic gel on a on a break apart hollow point, and you'll be like, "Oh my god, I never want to get shot ever because they'll <laughs> never find the pieces either." Um, it was kind of cool to see. There was two or three instances in the movie where uh, there were some pretty big explosions, yeah. and it was like, "I'm like, that's an old timey Hollywood big explosion," and it's like it's the kind that puts a smile on your face. <laughs> where where you have the knowledge of the internet to realize that two sticks of dynamite won't do that but damn it you're glad it did it like i think there was the one early explosion where it was like just like in the front of the saloon i think it might have been i'm not sure but like i'm not a i'm not a pyrotechnics person like i don't know the names of things or anything like that but like i know that there's like the types of things you can do where like you're just having it set in the front of something, but it's just going to kind of just make like a wall of flame. Like it's not really kind of going wide. And it's just to give the illusion that the front of something has blown up. Like I've seen, I've seen the technique and it was like old school fashion Hollywood style of that. And I was like, that's fucking, that's good to see. That's good to see. <laughs> Need to bring it back. Yeah. In the classical sense. Yeah. Um, now, what better uh, would I like, like, the at the end of the day, like, they, so they beat the shit out of him. Like, pretty, pretty, pretty rough. Now, let me say, before I get ahead of myself, uh, watching the kind of movies that we watch, we tend to see a lot of blood. Uh... And I remember the conversation that gets brought up with, I think, when Tom Savini talked about finally making, like, the perfect formula or finding the perfect formula. I'm not sure if it was his or he, like, he's like, I like this person's, I don't, it's something like that. But the blood in this movie, I'm not going to say it's bad, but I'm like, if I'm going to compare it to all the types of blood that I've seen in movies, I'm like, it's pretty bad. But the way that the film looks, the color palette, 
like the grain in it, like the old, like it, it's the right color for that. It's a bright film stock with a lot of grain. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like I, I, I was wondering if you were going to bring it up. It looks like the three M blood almost from Dawn of the Dead before they touched it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's very fluorescent. It does not look like anything that comes out of right. the human body. Right. <laughs> Um, you could have a rave if you shined a light on it, probably. There was the one guy, uh, who, I forget, I think Rodrigo is like dragging somebody out. It might, I'm not sure, but he was asking somebody something that was just that just got fucked up, and they had blood on their head, and it was like kind of like an M, kind of like on their forehead, the and it just... gets uh, fucked up later. And I was just like, and I'm like, somebody was trying to do the ultimate warrior. <laughs> you just can hear him running re- still. Goes up to the fucking, the place where you tie up the horse. and just. Da, 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 da. <laughs> then Razor comes out of the saloon with the Winchester and flicks a toothpick at you. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I wanted to note the blood. Cause I was like, I'm like, I don't, in, in, in the uh, wide uh, fucking scope of things of blood, not great. But for this particular movie, it, it works. I, I, I like it. Um, but anyway, so they beat the shit out of fucking uh, Clint Eastwood, and he escapes. Um, now, eventually, he has to make his comeback. And I was like, this is a fucking epic-ass entrance to a, for a fucking comeback. There's the explosion... And what was it? The fucking the Red Gang, the Rojos. I know, I I, I know Red <laughs> when I hear it. <laughs> um. And but so there's the explosion, and then the fucking like like before he even walks up, just the explosion. Like they fucking know. They're like, oh shit, it's him. <laughs> and then he just. <laughs> And I'm just like, I fucking dig it. I'm like, that's fucking epic. I like it. I really like that part. <laughs> and then you tell, and then he just fucking cleans house, and then he and he fucking humiliates the dude at the end. Oh my god, he emasculates the shit out of him. <laughs> between between that and the Wiley e. Coyote kill. I think like yeah, you know, with the barrel, yeah. The, I mean, Jesus and then he Christ. sets the, sets the brewery. Everybody was, like, ready. Like, once the brewery was on fire, everybody got into fucking action. They're like, we need to save that shit. <laughs> I grabbed my gun belt and ran outside when that happened. I mean, fucking shit, even I was a Dumbasses with just fucking buckets of water in their pajamas. We still save the beer at the brewery. <laughs> Fuck, that was supposed to last us through the summer. <clears throat> I was sitting there thinking about it. I was, like, because... He goes into the one scene and you see all the barrels above him and uh, and I'm sitting there thinking I'm like man for a town that small and I'm like you, know, you got to age that shit for a couple of years too so I'm like and I'm sitting there thinking I'm like that that might be a steady good amount but then like you pointed out the fucking the types of uh glasses and shit that the bartenders pouring out and I'm like he'll be fucking gone and out in under a month <laughs> I mean, they're I mean, generous. Sh- he fucking when he there was the one scene where like he got all fucking flustered and pissed off and like he wandered back into the fucking saloon and then Clint Eastwood followed after him, and he's so fucking razzled that he's pouring himself a fucking drink and he pours himself the most generous looking fucking double I've ever seen like that's borderline triple, um, uh, and he fucking. He slams part. He slams half of it, and he puts it down. And the fucking, uh, the table got a quarter shot just from all of that bullshit. And then I think he noticed that he spilled some of it. And I wonder if it was real al- alcohol, um, just because they were because he did that. And I noticed that upon the second one, he was a little bit more careful, so not to spill it. <laughs> I don't want to speak for all productions in Italy and Spain, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was actual alcohol, even if it was like a lower proof or something, just because, I mean, they, 
there's some documentaries from Italian movies where they're like, we drank on lunch. So, I mean, like, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if they skipped that whole formality and were like, y'all are cowboys. Do cowboy shit. Yeah, that was the other thing, too, where, like, I was watching all those fucking cigarillos that they had, and I'm like, that was back when you didn't even have to like that shit. You could just fucking chew on the end of it and get a fucking, like, buzz from that. <laughs> and I'm like, those were the good old days. And I'm like, there was a small point in time where, like, uh, I think it was, like, 19. <laughs> I was 19, and I'd buy those fucking Al Capones those fucking cigarillos and shit and go to the fucking pool hall thing and I'm some fucking Fonzie. <laughs> you, like, had, you had that face too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> what was your highlight moment of that? Uh, Well, unfortunately, we could never get alcohol because like I said, this was before we were 21. And the place kind of like, all right, it was one of those like weird things where like this place was smart enough to not sell alcohol to underage kids because they realized that this is a spot where high schoolers are fucking coming to hang out to play pool. They didn't give a shit if they saw you smoking because they're like, hey, you could be 18 for all I fucking know, you know, but that we're not going to sell you alcohol. So they kind of let that shit slide. <laughs> Which was nice, but, you know, like I saw, I'm just walking around with a fucking big, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm hanging out with uh, South Florida. I went, you know, high school in South Florida, so I'm hanging out with a lot of Cuban people. <laughs> it was, uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. The stories I'm sure you have from that just. Oh, and the cocaine was fabulous. No, <laughs> I'm not making that up, but I, I won't go into detail. <laughs> South Florida, come on! What are you gonna do? look at the shirt I'm wearing? <laughs> I was about to make that joke too, but I didn't. I didn't want to because I was then I looked down at mine and went, "This isn't a cocaine shirt. I'm pretty sure this is a uh, mushroom shirt." <laughs> Hello. Hello. By the way, I'm not condoning anything, you. and it has been. 10 double digit years since I've <laughs> indulged in that so <laughs> there, was no, there was no judgment on my side yeah, of the table yeah no. I'm just I'm just don't do drugs kids <laughs> we don't condone anything on this show as I sat here and drank a beer at the beginning and it is good to see you too Rav how are you I hope you're doing the best <laughs> and thank you I like the shirt we 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 just we we somehow decided Hawaiian shirts that's the way to go way to go it's a way of life <laughs> it is it's um lifestyle. but i dug the uh the badassness of just like not only did he fucking like it's one thing to fucking just win but to humiliate and win is like that's good that's good and just as easy like this was the thing and i i think that people mentioned this or at least have talked about it but i did notice it it was something that i noticed and i'm not saying that this hasn't been done in movies before but there was just something about this that like i'm like there was something different about it in a cool way the um just as easily as he rode into town after all was said and done, he was like, all right, later. Just fucking, I did what I had to do, and he's just fucking pieces the fuck out. And it was just like, he's just going to get into some other shit in the next town down the way. <laughs> and we need a movie about that, too. Yeah. And it was just like, it, it, there was just, you know, because like I said, you see the whole, like, they come in and then they leave. You know, like you see that happen in movies all the time, all sorts of different kinds of movies. But for some reason, it was just the combo of that, the humor of the uh, coffin maker measuring all the bodies at the end. And then it was just like, he came in, there was a situation, he fucking dealt with it, and he fucking left. We're fucking done. We don't even need credits. Something just beautiful about that. <laughs> I, one he is, the he is the 
the precursor to the anti-hero that we know and love, specifically Jack Burton, because they have a similar character arc, mm -hmm. oddly enough. Um, but him emasculating Ramon, that's a villain thing. So that's an anti-hero thing. So that's not something you normally would see. And then, yeah, to just be like, I fucked up your town, but uh, I saved y'all. Y'all got some gold out of this, and I'm out. It's ultimate. It's 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 <laughs> like you said at the beginning. It's badass. It's exactly what we need. If you even if you're not a fan of westerns, this isn't just a western. This is a it is an experience, and it's not an experience yeah. like things. <laughs> yeah, no, it it really is. Because like I said, I, I don't really normally like cowboy stuff, like western stuff, but. Presented in the proper way, I can dig it. Um, this is just like it's old timey, and I, I I I use that in a humorous way because you know I mean it's not it's not super old. I mean when was when when this was what uh, when did this movie come out? I think this is sixty four. Yeah, so I mean, I mean I know sixty four sounds like fucking. A million years ago, but it's really not. <laughs> um, Pink Floyd hadn't even formed then. Oh. <laughs> but uh, it's you know that old timey fucking smooth and cool. Like you know how like there's some shit where you're just like that's not fucking cool. That's fucking bullshit. But then there's that underground stuff where you're just like that's what it means to be a cool dude. Like, this is that for that time, and it still works, because he's a fucking cool dude. <laughs> he's not saying he's a good dude, but he's cool and fucking smooth. He never really loses his shit. That's the thing. It's like, even when he it doesn't seem like he's in control, the fact that he never flips out or, like, has a moment of, like, oh, fuck, like, he's just kind of, like, all right, now that he, it, it's kind of like he's always playing chess. Like he makes his move and he watches what they fucking do. And he's like, all right, so now I need to make my move. Even if it's something he didn't expect them to do, it's he's just kind of like, okay, so I will do this then in return. Like he doesn't, you know what I mean? And it's just like, that's fucking baller right there. <laughs> he's a man with a pace plan. If you're unfamiliar with the acronym PACE, it means primary alternate contingency emergency and it's a planning acronym that dude went through all of them and then back up the ladder by the end of the movie and he came out on top mm -hmm. because he's badass if 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 this movie came, came out today that Clint Eastwood in this would be one of the that guy's totally me memes he is the walking embodiment of confidence not cocky or egotistical, but cool, calm, collected confidence. <laughs> Vince McMahon would say he's oozing machismo. Yes, yes. <laughs> to get another Razor Ramon in there. But, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, usually when, when I talk to people about this movie, they don't really bring that up. But the word control. The dude, like you said, is in control from the get-go and even when it seems like it isn't he's got something that that is what steven seagull tried to do in the 80s and 90s <laughs> and it didn't fucking work because he lacked the one other piece of it that you need to make it work is it another c word cool oh, i was gonna say charisma <laughs> that, too. that too but but cool and charisma are inter are intertwined so yeah i guess it is he lacks the he lacks the cool factor, the charisma. If we were playing Fallout and he was doing his special stats, he set charisma at a one, whereas Clint Eastwood somehow managed to set all of the stats at ten. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, like I said, this was something that I didn't... Even as attentive as I was, I was like, I couldn't following the exact storyline but i got the i'm like i said i'm like okay i know that guy's bad i know that guy's good i know that there's gold <laughs> you know like i get it. Hills. yeah i get it um oh shit um 
two, what was it? Two fucking or three. There's three moments. And there I, I forgot. So uh there's the ultimate moment where um Clint Eastwood, uh, like I said, I'm like, that's way more than a rickshaw. <laughs> that was like a fucking haymaker. <laughs> like he fucking That was a PhD pimp vibe check. Yeah. That was a straight up like knockout, knock you the fuck out punch. Uh, he accidentally, it wasn't intentional. Like to be fair, she snuck up on him. <laughs> he, he was doing some dangerous shit, and when a man is doing some dangerous shit, I, I'll even. It doesn't matter who, man, woman, if anybody is doing dangerous shit, and you sneak up on him, probably gonna get hit. Uh, and at least he had the courtesy to take care of her. <laughs> Make sure she was all right. Which uh, led into the entire last act, really. Yeah. You know. Um, and then there was uh there was the one moment where the one woman slapped the dude, and I'm like, now that's a rickshaw. <laughs> and I'm like, you heard that shit. Um plus but my, rickshaw. Yeah. But my ultimate favorite, and I don't know why it makes me laugh, but just when that woman in that's dressed in all black comes out and you're and like he gives her that smug look and then his buddy fucking shoots her and kills her and i'm just like she was getting a little loud <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm not saying i'm not condoning anything but i'm just saying she was getting a little loud <laughs> it's the same fe- i put it's the same feeling that you get in maximum overdrive when the waitress walks outside <laughs> and she's like shut up <laughs> Plus, you don't really feel bad that the lady in black gets shot because she was leading the rival gang that was also putting a stranglehold on the town. Yeah, so, yeah. it's a bad guy. It's a bad guy. Well, bad woman. So it's fine. But I completely applauded the other, the one woman for rickshawing the dude. That was fucking. That was. She, that was the only true proper rickshaw in the movie, and it was a damn fine one. Um, but uh, Glenn Eastwood, whatever the fuck he did, whack. <laughs> like Mike Tyson to that shit. <laughs> but uh uh that was fucking crazy. Um but anyway, that being said, uh even though I I feel weird rating this when I'm not a hundred percent on the story, but Based off of what I already know and what I've seen, I'm like, this movie at 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 least is a three or a three five. Um, I'm almost normally I would be on the safe side and be like, I would say, I'm sure, like, like I'm like I'm that. Uh, I, if I don't know the story, I'm going to play it safe and, and go three, but reserve it to be a three, five based upon understanding the story. I'm going to go ahead and jump the gun here. No pun intended. Um, and say that even if I never understand it, or I'm sure that if I do, that I will be like, all right, that, that no, that's cool. I'm going to say three, five anyway, because it, it it's just, he's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I there was shit that I liked. I'm like, you know, this is this is at least a three five. Yeah. If anything, maybe a four, but that I'm like I don't want to go crazy. But it was at least a three five. Maybe with future viewings it might go all the way to a four. Yeah. Then my retort to you, sir. I want to give it a 3.5 because it, it is a shameful, or shameless, remake of Yojimbo, which I'm a big samurai guy, so, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's a Western. Not just, it's not like Star Wars, which is a samurai movie in sci-fi clothing. It's still a Western at, an M- at the end of the day. So... I'm going to give it four to average it to a 375 because I do kind of have to 
I do kind of have to knock it down a peg or two just because of the remake thing and the fact that I think for a few dollars more is superior. Uh, that was the fourth one we watched that day uh, where <laughs> Lee Van Cleef gets introduced and I think it does a... It's an original story and it is damn good. But, yeah. Even not having a full grasp on a fistful of dollars, you're like, damn, this is fucking cool. There's enough action... And uh, there's enough cool shit. Um, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> we uh, we technically did an Italian movie tonight, Ian. That was also a critically acclaimed Italian movie at the time. They were throwing out westerns left and right, so. Well, you know, you know why weird. that is. I was thinking about that, and I guarantee you, I know why. It's because there are a couple lines of dialogue in this movie where they constantly say he's a smart American. They keep saying how smart Americans are. Uh, yeah. So they were like, "I like, I like this movie." Yeah. <laughs> That's the secret. Like any Italian movie, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as you sl- sneak in one, uh, you know, America's really great and really swell uh, line. It'll be fucking, <laughs> that's how you get red carpet premieres. <laughs> uh, you might be on to something here. Not just the fact that it's shot beautiful, but that is actually a much better point. They they, they played the they played the USA card on us yeah. at a time that the Cold War was going on, so... Uh, sons of bitches <laughs> I fucking knew this movie wasn't as good as I thought it was 